that is all mankind. And letting his son suffer the second death that we all deserve so that we can have the faith and the righteousness of Christ that none of us deserve. Amen. This is why I love Jesus Christ. And this is why I've given him my heart. We conclude, we look at the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus is a saving faith. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Turn it with me. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. It says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself what? Nothing. Nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming what? Obedient. If Christ had to become obedient, then shouldn't we become obedient? He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. The faith of Jesus is saving faith. This is a faith that not only believes in the absence of feelings, but against feelings. In the last days of earth's history, God's people will receive the full cup of Christ's faith. Amen? Amen. Is that good news? Amen. Let me read it again. In the last days of earth's history, God's people will receive the full cup of Christ's faith. Do you want the full cup of Christ's faith? Amen. It comes through the message of Christ, our righteousness, which is, I am crucified with Christ, and His righteousness lives in me, so it is no longer I who live, but it is truly Jesus, living His perfect life in me, by the same faith of Jesus that allowed Him to hang on the cross, feeling forsaken by His Father. Crushed by the weight of the sins of the world, tempted by Satan in his final testing hour, Jesus is at his weakest and most vulnerable state. But here, brothers and sisters, here is the power of the gospel. Here is the power of our Christ and the power of the Word of God. Here is the faith of Jesus. Christ, with our weakened, fallen nature, overcame all that the devil hurled at him and proved decisively the superiority of the Word of God and the faith of Jesus, as God demonstrated that with all the weakness of the flesh, with all the committed sins of the world heaped upon Christ, God's grace is stronger than all the power of the devil. Amen. Jesus held on by faith to His Father, and we are to overcome by holding on with everything that we are to faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus endured hell itself. For he died the second death so that you and I would never, ever, ever have to face the just punishment for our sins. As sin worked its way through the nervous system of Jesus, he who knew no sin became sin. And God the Father came from heaven to be by the side of his beloved Son. Although there was a violent severance between the persons of the Godhead because of sin, yet the Father came as close to Jesus as he could. This gives a whole new meaning of the phrase, God hates the sin, but loves the sin. He could not remain in heaven, but the Father longed to bring Christ some assurance and hope as he was being put to death. But he could not. He could only look on in horror, but he could not help the man who was his fellow companion from eternal ages. In your mind's eye, Picture the father standing next to his suffering son, trembling and weeping, longing to comfort him. God put his own omnipotence under restraint as he refrained from breaking through the darkness to deliver his agonizing son. And he did that all for you. <laughs> Are we worthy? No. Do you start to grasp a little bit of the love that the Father has for us, His erring children. 
do you realize what Christ has done for us? At any time, as I said, he could have said, Father, I've had enough. These people are not worth this. But he saw your face. He saw my face. And he was able to say, I would rather be separated from my Father throughout all eternity than to see you separated from your God, your Creator. This, brothers and sisters, this is Christ our Savior, hanging on the cross, taking the penalties for your sin and my sin. But does the story end there? That's right. Because Christ our Savior has now become Christ our righteousness. What is this picture of Jesus in this picture of? Our high priest. Right? Isn't that what the book of Hebrews is all about? Jesus is our high priest and he's ministering in the heavenly sanctuary. Where in the heavenly sanctuary? For what purpose? What purpose is he in the most holy place? Lighting out of sin. What's that, RJ? Lighting out of sin. Right? Christ came to take away our sin. Now, does that mean that he's going to wave a magic wand over you and poof? You're going to be perfect? All your sins will be gone? Does it mean that you can continue to sin because he's already paid for it, so it doesn't matter what you do? Understand what Christ has done for you. Understand the power that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news of salvation. That Christ took your sin and took my sin in this fallen flesh, and he overcame all of it. And in his weakest state, the devil hurled all of his power at him, and the devil failed. And if Christ lives in you by the power of the Holy Spirit, what power do you have over sin? The same power that Christ had. Is that correct? Amen. Amen. So if Christ is in me, then truly that is the hope of glory. What is the glory? Say it loudly because you're right. The glory is Christ's character fully coming out of me. So that the world no longer sees me, but the world sees Christ. That's the hope of glory. Do you live for this hope? Amen. Are you willing to die for this hope? <laughs> You're quieter on that one. Here, I ask you that question to tell you this. Unless you are willing to die for that hope, you will never have that hope. Because this flesh has to die. Is that right? Amen. The only way for this flesh to die is if Christ comes in and gives me the power to die to self. Is that not what the gospel does for us? Is that not what Christ in me, the hope of glory, does for me? It allows me to actually overcome sin. Amen? Amen. How many of you believe you can actually overcome sin? Only with Christ. That's right. If Christ is in you, then all the power that allowed him to be victorious on the cross lives inside of you. Amen. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. That's God in you. And as Christ overcame, we too can overcome. So brothers and sisters, as I close this morning, I want to ask you, as the world at this time looks at the birth of Christ, and the world is okay with a baby because a baby is innocent. A baby is helpless. A baby needs our help. But don't leave Christ in the manger. Don't just look at him as a child or as a baby, but look at Christ, the man. Look at what he had done for us, what he's still doing for us, and what he will do for us throughout all eternity. Do you want to be there with him? So, I ask this one last question. Why are we still here? <laughs> Do you have an answer in your head for that question? Because that is a valid question. And that question will continue to be asked and continue to be asked until we actually have an answer Christ and great. submit to Christ and allow Him to do the work that He's wanted to do for millennia. 
Why are we still here? Well, you answer that yourself. Do you want to be with Christ? Do you want to be able to go home? Would you be willing to stand this morning and say to Christ, Lord, I have sinned. I have fallen so short. I have read your word. I have professed your word. But yet in my heart there's still unbelief. Are you willing to stand for that? Are you willing to acknowledge that this is our condition? But it doesn't have to be our condition. Listen, this morning as I have closing prayer, I do not want to leave here unless I know that you fully understand what was done for you on the cross. That you fully glimpse the love that God has for you. And that you're able to take that love, let it burn in your hearts, and share it with those that you meet when you leave here today for the rest of the week. But more than that, I want you to understand why God raised this church up. Why there are such a thing as Seventh-day Adventists. That we're not just one of a thousand different denominations. That God has given us a unique message to share. That God has given us light and wisdom that no other church has. And what I want you to do this morning is to recommit yourself to the truths that are found in Scripture and the Spirit of Prophecy. And the truths that God raised this church up to share with the world. Are you willing to do that? Amen. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ. For Father, I understand in my own life how sin separates me from you. But I'm also grasping what it cost you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit to pay for my sin. So Father, what we do is we come here this morning and we want to recommit our lives to you and we want to recommit ourselves to the message that you have entrusted us with to give to this world. Father, we say we want to go home. We say we want to be with you. But yet we're still here. So what that tells me is that, Lord, there's still something within us that is fighting against you. Father, my prayer this morning is that you will help us to submit and humble ourselves to be obedient to Jesus Christ the truths that are contained in your word. Father, help us to be that generation who is willing to trust you fully and completely to allow you to give us victory over sin. Father, it can be done. Your word has promised it. And I know in my heart that everything you have promised me, you've done. Father, bless us with your spirit. Bless us with your strength. And bless us with the ability and the power through the Holy Spirit to take this message to a dying world. For this I ask and pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 125.
thank you for this day. Thank you for the privilege of being here this morning. Father, I pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on all those who are gathered here. That, Father, they will see Jesus and see him lifted up high. And they will understand in the depths of their being the love that you have poured out upon us. Father, I ask that as we leave here, that you will empower us to be witnesses for you to those who we come in contact with. But Father, I also pray, pray from the bottom of my heart, that you will help us as your people to understand who we are, what we've been called for, who we are as Adventists, and the mission that you've given us. Father, I pray that you help us to submit to you and allow you to do this work of transformation in us. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.